Good Shabbos, everyone, and welcome back to my weekly Devar Torah this week about Parshat Ki There is a very strange commandment in this week's Parsha. The Torah tells us that a child who is deemed to be a Ben Sora Umora by his parents is brought by them to the elders of the city who then, after a short clarification process, order that the son should be stoned by members of the city to death. What renders a child or teenager so wicked that he deserves death? Surely all youth go through a rebellious stage. I know I did. How about convening a panel of experts, therapists, child psychologists and psychiatrists to deal with this delinquency problem? But, but why should he be killed? Another question. Chazal definitively say that one is only liable for punishment from the age of 20. But the same Chazal say that the Ben Sora Umore is under Bar Mitzvah. H how is that possible? The Torah describes this son as Sorer Umore. Rashi explains the dual phrase as referring to the fact that this boy is Sor Min Haderech. He turns away from the correct path and he is a Mesarev Bedivrei Aviv. He refuses to accept the words of his father. This basically means that the boy has rebelled against the two primary sources of authority in his life, Hashem and his parents. The Gemara in Sanhedrin says that the boy steals and eats an enormous amount of meat and drinks a large amount of fancy wine. In other words, he's a thief, he's a glutton, and he's an alcoholic. I mean, okay, these are not particularly pleasant traits, but surely a stern telling off, time out, therapy. That can deal with it. But execution by stoning? Come on! Rashi tries to answer this question by quoting another Chazal. The Ben Sore Umore is not killed because of what he is now, but because of what he will eventually become. Ultimately, he will run out of his father's money and become a big-time mafioso, a professional criminal, even a murderer. The Torah is predicting this outcome and prefers that he is killed while still innocent, as it were, rather than wait until he is properly guilty of real crimes. But, th but this is also very, very difficult to understand. Are we ready to just give up on this kid? Are we saying that there's no way to bring him around, that nothing can be done to coach him back to the right path? The final and most difficult question of all is the one I addressed in this week's Parsha Shir. The Gemara says that no case of Ben Sora Umore ever occurred throughout Jewish history, and it never will. That's quite a statement. It's completely impossible. But aside for anything else, why would the Torah bother telling us about it if it's never going to happen? Now, the Gemara has its answer to this particular question, as I talked about in my share this week, but I want to look at the Abarbanel right now and see if he can help us answer the question, all the questions. Abarbanel takes a different approach as to the sin of the Ben Sora Umara, and I want to share it with you. He says that in addition to being a tearaway rebel, the Ben Sora Umara is a terrible influence on others, causing them to become bad. The reason the Torah takes such a harsh line with him is because of the negative effect he is having on other people. It could be that he does not deserve to die for his own sins, but the damage he is causing to those around him is simply too dangerous to allow to continue, and as a result, he must be killed. Now that should give us pause for thought. That's a message worth considering. Imagine how many times we have said to ourselves about our children, they're not too bad, it's okay. But imagine the effect that their less than perfect behavior may be having on others. And how about ourselves? Think about yourself. How many times do we justify our own foibles and negative idiosyncrasies by rationalizing that it's okay, we're not too bad as people, we're okay. But what about the influence we have on the way other people behave. We're not just here for ourselves. We don't live in isolation. We are all role models for others. Maybe God doesn't just judge us by our own actions for ourselves, but also based on how our behavior influences 
and affects other people around us, our family, our friends, our community. What is your behaviour footprint on God's world? Now that is a question worth considering, isn't it? Chazal say that the punishment of Ben Sura Omore is based on a prediction regarding the future depths to which this boy can sink. Who is wise, it says in Pirkei Avot, he who can predict the future. We must predict the future as best we can. We must concern ourselves with the best possible outcome and potential of our actions and that of our children. And we must act accordingly so that our society will emulate the image of God in which we were created. So it may never have happened, but the mere fact that such a harsh punishment is actually meted out potentially to Ben Sora and Mora should tell us everything we need to know about how we need to behave as role models in the world in which we live. And with that, I wish you all Shabbat Shalom.